Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Super Beings by Alien Play Games. Super Beings is for two to four players, plays in about an hour or so, and it's for ages 13 and up. In the game, you're basically going to be constructing a front and a back line with these huge jumbo sized cards, and you'll be fighting against your opponents. Now, it is a living deck builder style game, living card game, deck builder style game, and basically, you're going to be making decks based on a list list of different uh, different things here. Let me show you. There's a, there's a big list of different decks you can make here. It tells you all the different ones here and here. But you can also go ahead and make your own different decks to create the, de the deck of scheme cards. Things you can do like tactical offenses as well as tactical defenses. Scheme offenses. And then also different types of creatures in the deck. And there's tons of creatures to choose from just alone in this box that we have here for the prototype. A lot of stuff going on here. But that is the basic idea of the game. You're going to set up a front and a back line. Be attacking each other with different abilities and stuff like that. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here we have the full setup for Super Beings. What you're going to see first is the battle deck as well as the super deck. You have battled actions as well as super actions over here, as well as your leader tokens you can use, and a bunch of other tokens for KOs, shields, invisible stuns. Uh, you have DC checks for these dice over here, which is just a little alien die as well as a bunch of extra random die we will be using for either combat or wounds or whenever they're needed because some of the cards will actually require you to need these. Now let's go through the setup. And the first thing you're going to need to do is go through these decks here. One player will start off and you're going to see the super rank here. And you're going to need to pick, pick any ones of them that have three or less and it's going to be randomized. So here's a three, nice. And this is a three and one more super rank three. Okay, that was nice. Nice, easy setup. Now on this side, you have a super rank of three. Uh, and this one says a super rank of five. So this will go to the bottom of the deck over here. And then a super rank of two and another super rank of three. Now that's going to set up your front line. You're also going to have a back line, which you can actually add cards to. But for the basic setup, this is all you need to do. Also, you're going to need to add some, yourself some action credits. I think it is three action credits a piece. As well as for the first play, we'll get to draw one of these scheme and or battle cards to begin their turn. To start your turn, you simply draw a card from the battle deck. After that, you're going to give yourself three action points. And during your turn, you can keep up to 12 on a big die. However, you might gain additional ones. And at the end of your turn, you're going to lose those if you don't, if you don't use them. Afterwards, you're going to take actions. And there is a plethora of different actions in this game, which we'll get into when I show you how to play a couple turns. Then you're going to have the early attack phase, which involves a lot of different things that cards will do during the early attack phase before attacking happens. Like, for instance, this guy here, once per game during the early attack phase, Phase, you can target and roll the DC dice, the little alien guys I was talking about. For each opponent on the battlefield and for each of those targets, you can then stun them. So a nice little uh, pre-attacking phase action. Afterwards, you're going to do the attack phase, which is simply you're going to roll a D12. And you're going to gain um, action credits based on the number you roll. After that, you're going to uh, go through a main phase in which you can do any of the actions you want to again without actually rolling the die or adding any of these bonuses to you or adding any of these extra action credits to you. And then you're going to pass your turn. Now remember, the last player is the only player at the beginning of the game who can actually perform any of the attack phase options, um, as well as you have to have your character in the pow mode in order to do so. But anyway, let me go ahead and show you the game and how a couple turns work. So it's my turn first over here, and I've already went ahead and drawn a card, as well as given myself three action credits, because that's what you do at the beginning of your turn. Afterwards, you're going to go ahead and take any actions you would like to take. There's a plethora of different actions, and I'll go ahead and go through them with you right now. The first thing you can do is draw a super card and place it in your back row, and that would cost you one action. So for your entire turn, you could, if you wanted to, fill up your entire back row. Another thing you could do is move. You could simply move one creature from here over to here, and that would cost you an action. And there's a bunch of different other movement options available as well. For instance, this would cost you two points of movement. Uh, you could retreat one for their cost, as well as assigning a leader for their cost as well. And it's either based on their super rank cost or star cost, depending on these different uh, actions you can take. You could discard cards from your hand to give yourself one action credit. So if I wanted to, I could discard this card from my hand and pop myself up to four. Or if I wanted to, I could discard a card from the field, and based on its rank, its super rank here, I would gain AC, some more action credits. However, the cost of doing that would mean that my opponent is going to gain a victory uh, condition. And the way to win the game is obviously killing super beings or removing a certain amount of rank. So you either kill five supers from your opponent, 15 uh, stars worth of rank, 
or have your opponent have no supers on the field at all in order to win. So discarding is kind of a last ditch effort. The next thing you're going to do on your turn after you've completed all your actions, so I'll just simply go ahead and play all three of these, removing this, showing these little zeros on the field, meaning I have nothing left, is then I'm going to go ahead and take any early attack to uh, take my early attack phase. However, I can only do that with my pro mode monsters. I don't have any of those over. Another action could be to flip one of these guys over to its pow mode. So I'm not going to go ahead and do that. Oh, pow mode was where, where you would attack. So you have to flip this over to do its pow mode in order for you to attack. But I'm not going to do that. I already spent all my actions. Plus, you can only attack during the attack phase if you have a monster in your pow mode as well as being the last player at the beginning of the game. So that would mean that the second player could attack and the first player could not. And in a four player game, the fourth player could attack and the first three could not. Then you're going to go to, back to your main phase, take any more actions you want. If you have any actions, I don't. And then pass the turn. And so on and so forth. The next player would get to go, gaining his three, getting to draw one of his cards. He can then play any of these things he wants to put down, just like this. Maybe he wants to flip over one of his cards. And now that he's done that, he can go ahead and take a part in the uh, early attack phase if he wants. He checks to see if there's anything that has to do with early attack phase, and there isn't. So, oh, here's one. Once during your early attack phase, uh, declare cannon as an invincible and shielded. So if he wanted to, he could actually give himself a shield and uh, invincible right now, which would be kind of cool. However, he could also attack. And the way you attack is pretty simple. You roll a d12. Let's we'll go ahead and take one of these bad boys over here. And you add that to your, your attack credit. So you would go to 10 here. Now, like I said before, you can only have these guys at max and any additional ones you were to gain. So if you had an additional five here, if you didn't spend this and this was 12, this would go away. So you can only have a max there. Afterwards, you're going to go ahead and use your abilities to attack. So during the attack phase, it's pretty simple. Like I said, the second player is going to get to attack first. But if he were to attack with this guy here, he would have to flip it over for one action. And then right up here, it shows this little star cost. And that indicates how many of these red attack points he's going to have to spend in order to do his ability. If he spends three up here, he's going to get to do his annoyingly maddening damaging hex. Inflict two damage. In addition, roll a DC. And if that is heads, this being this die here, if it's a heads, he's going to get to do four damage to your opponent's backliner. Now, in general, you're always going to do damage to the character or super being that you are next to. So if he's in the middle row, he's in, if he's in the middle, he gets to attack the character in the front and middle of your opponent's row. However, this guy's special to attack both middle as long as he actually rolls the die here. But that's the idea. Uh, let me go ahead and talk to you and show you down here how POW mode works and how the PRO mode works. So now we're back to the battling step of the game. And like I had shown before, I put two monsters out and I flipped him over to the POW mode. And that removed all of my actions. But I did get to roll for my battling. And I got 10. Which means that I can use his ability. Now during the pre-combat phase, I can simply give him a invisible and a shielded token which means that he can he's 50 percent less likely to be hit and when he does get hit he takes half damage and he can't be stunned pretty cool right there but also he can then be spending three of his attack actions so going 10 9 8 7 let me find the seven here right there and he can use his ability rapid energy cannon blasts so i simply roll a dc if heads which it wasn't i would do nothing but if it was heads i would target all my opponent's monsters on the field and and it says inflict one damage to all threes, two damage to all four ranks, three damage to all five, four, so on and so forth. So for all of my opponent's monsters, they would take damage based on their ranks. So let's go ahead and look over here. This guy's a rank three, so he takes a damage. These, these are all rank three here. No, this is a rank two, so he doesn't take any damage. That's nice. And then in the back row as well, super rank four. And that says two damage, I believe. And five is three, and three is one. So he just did a bunch of damage to all of my guys. Now what happens too is if you look at this pro mode over here, it shows you a number. These are the health of your monsters. And if the monster takes over that damage, over that, that threshold here of seven, if it takes eight, it's going to flip over into its pow mode. And then once it dies in its pow mode, it is gone. So you could choose to keep it in its defensive positioning if you just want to use any of its abilities maybe, or just keep him alive as long as you can. But when you flip him over, that's when you get to do your attacks and all your special abilities and whatnot. But they're likelier to be killed quicker. Now, obviously, if a creature dies, well, obviously, but when a creature dies from a leader card, so for instance, if he actually spent all of his actions on this guy or two of his actions to make him a leader, he could then attack this guy provided he was able to. And if a leader can kill a monster in the back row, it simply dies. It doesn't have to go to its pow mode. And that's when you're going to get bonuses. That's when you're going to get uh, 
the closer to winning the game because you need to kill five monsters, fifteen points of monsters, or simply remove all of your opponents on the monsters on the field, which this cannon guy can pretty much do, provided he's able to stay alive long enough. And then the turn would pass again. The next player would get to draw his card, get more actions, do anything he wants as far as moving is concerned and flipping over, and then attacking if he's able to by rolling this rolling one of these guys die. One all right, so maybe one wouldn't be a very good one. But he would be able to use, if he had three, be able to use certain things. This one says take do damage, roll DC, and you can do damage to your target on the other side, like I was talking about before. And they all have different things like that. And yeah, that's the basic idea of how to play the game. You're killing each other's monsters using these huge cards to play these other special tactic cards here. This one over here says once during your end phase, each player puts all the cards into their hand back into their battle deck and then draws cards equal to the number of supers on the battlefield. Wow, that's a really, really crazy one. As well as you're going to have schemes they are going to lay on the battlefield. You have more tactic offenses. There's tons of cool, crazy cards that are going to be able to be, you be able to affect the way the game plays. On defense, after a super of yours is KO'd, draw three battle cards. And this one has a, it's a scheme, but it has a two-timer. So that's pretty good, but it only lasts for so long. But so on and so forth. There's a bunch of cool cards like that. But that is the idea of how to play Super Beings, the jumbo card game. So Super Beings by Alien Play Games. Well, what do I think about it? Well, first of all, it's a huge card game. If you don't like games that have huge cards, you're not going to like this one. It does take up a lot of space. And it has some really unique artwork. I really actually really like this kind of comic booky style art. All the different characters. And if you notice, there's a lot of little Easter eggs involved in the game with all these different, there's so many characters. And front and back, different art for both sides. Really, really cool that they did that. If you like this comic booky art, you're going to like it as well. The front and back aspects where you're attacking back and forth. There's a ton of actions in this game. I think that might be a little confusing for quite a few people if they have to go through it um, one step by step. But I actually made a really nice little card and I think it might be included in the game later. A little reference card that will indicate all the different abilities you can do as well as maybe even subsidizing them down. Simply moving as opposed to the cost of this is two and this is one and this is four. Making it all uh, more cohesive would be a good idea. But the game plays pretty well. It's just a simple dice rolling strategical combat placement game. Uh, the living card game aspect is really cool. I like the fact that you can set up your own decks as well as they give you your, they give you a unique setup for the beginning starter decks. Uh, the scheme cards work really well. I enjoy playing them against my opponent. There's a lot of take that action when it comes to these scheme cards as well as a lot of tactical uh, things that you can do, like saving for your next turn kind of placements, like, okay, I know he's going to move this space here, and I'm going to be able to attack this guy, and I might kill him, so I'm going to probably play this card now so that I can draw these cards later. A lot of cool different actions involved there, as well as the fact that it's not too much luck, right? You, the idea is everybody's going to get the same amount of things throughout the entire game. The most the most luck, I guess, will be involved in the battle deck and how you're pulling these cards out and which ones you're going to get and how strong they are. Uh, right now, some of the cards are a little unbalanced, but as far as I'm, as far as as I've known, they've been changing the different uh, unbalancing issues throughout the game. But I just want to let you guys know about that. A lot of them are, they work very, very similar and have a lot of different unique super being powers was they can attack the back line or attack, attack a multitude of different characters. Like just this cannon one, which is so funny. He gets to be shielded and invisible and he gets to hit the entire field of your opponents. However, he has a low health, so he can be killed. Um, the different stunning and shielding and invisible and stuff like that makes it very makes it very simple to understand and playing all these big tokens makes it easy for people that are even a little older to play this game. Once you get the basic idea of it down, it's a fairly simple game to play and the concept is really easy. Everything kind of melds together and it works really well. I definitely like this game. I'm definitely going to play it more. I'm excited to also announce that we will be doing this live, I believe, this week on Wednesday. So if you're interested in checking out this game and seeing if you're interested in it for yourself, Itself, I do suppose you should do that. Alright guys, thanks for watching another episode of Unfiltered Gamer Board Game Reviews. If you like this video, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. we got tons of blog posts, giveaways, and more. Also, don't forget to go check out Super Bings, which is currently up on Kickstarter. If not, it's very soon to be up on Kickstarter. As well as checking out our live play. We're going to be doing it throughout the entire morning aspect with the creators to show you exactly how the game plays and see if you're interested in picking up this jumbo uh, deck building slash uh, living card game. So do go ahead and check it out. We appreciate everything, all the support and everything you guys have done for us. As well as checking out our affiliated sponsor sites, everythingboardgames.com, Devatos Gaming, and The Giveaway Geek. Alright guys, well that's it for this video. And once again, I look forward to seeing you next time.